Welcome to channel everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can measure a frame at home in your garage. Uh, you can do it in your shop. Very simple to do. A couple of things we'll need. Nothing really expensive. Now, I've heard about this way of doing it years ago and I've never tried it. So this will be the first time. There was really no need for me to, to mess with it because I always had access to centerline gauges, tram gauges. Starting in the middle 90s, a computerized 3D measuring system. But this way, when I heard about it, it made perfect sense. And I've always had it in the back of my mind thinking it's kind of interesting. I'm going to have to try it one day. Well, today is one day. I'm going to show you what you need to do to get started. We need just a regular carpenter's plumb bob. And I took the string and shortened this up. And I tied a loop on the end of it. We'll need that. You need one of these heavy-duty paper clips here. Need a tape measure. We need a coat hanger, and I've already cut a couple pieces off, about three to four inch long pieces. Took needle nose pliers, bent them into a V. Sharpie, a roll of tape. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with all this stuff. It seems to be a pretty simple way to get an accurate measurement on a frame. Okay, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown on what we're gonna do here. This represents the frame, and I'm using my pickup truck for this demo here. And we're gonna take that plumb bob, and we're going to find holes along the frame, holes and bolts, whatever we can use. Whenever you're measuring something, you have to do both sides the same. So if you find a hole that'll work on one frame rail, you have to find the same hole on the other. And we're going to take our plumb bob, and we're going to mark this on the floor where this plumb bob hits. And we want to find as many places as we can. And then when this is all done, we can measure the frame for length, we can measure for diamond, and we can also measure for side sway. Now the best way to do this, the vehicle should be sitting on jack stands, somewhere right in the torque box areas. You don't want the car sitting on a suspension because if you've got a, a low tire or a weak spring or something that makes the car sag, it's gonna, it may be a little different side to side. And we're also going to be measuring height on here too, front and back. So if you use jack stands or even blocks of wood to support it, you want both sides, left and right, to be identical in height. Okay, to get started, I'm on a left frame rail. This is a left front torque box. So what I'm going to do, we're going to measure off this hole right here. That's where these little pieces of wire come in. Loop that through here. I'm going to squeeze this um, just enough to get it in there, and that self-centers it. And with the plumb bob, that's where the paper clip comes in. This will set our height so we can adjust it. I'm going to put a piece of tape underneath here. And I'm going to put an X under this plumb bob. You could just put your marks on the floor. But if you want to change something or you got something that you don't like, then you got extra marks on the floor. It might confuse you when you do your final measurement. So we can just pull up the tape if we want to. Okay, now we'll move towards the rear. Okay, on the left rear, I don't like this hole here. It's pretty big. So what I'm going to do, I have the loop on the end of this string. I'm going to put it on this spring bolt right up against the nut, and we'll use that. And that's actually one of the better places you can measure vehicle. If you're using a computerized 3D measuring system, this is a point that most of them would always use. Okay, I'm going to use this rear hole in the frame rail here on both sides. I'm going to open this wire up a little bit because it's a bigger hole. Now a pen might have been a better choice than this Sharpie to get a finer line on it. 
Okay, I'm on the right rear spring. Make sure that string is up against the nut, just like the other side. And the right front torque box. And when I heard about the way the guys are doing this with a plumb bob, I wasn't sure how they connected them. I come up with these because those will self-center themselves. Uh, then I had to figure out how to adjust it without having a lot of problems. So I found that paper clip and that seems to work good. Okay, I'll move up to the front of the truck. Okay, the front frame rails on this truck there's no holes in the bottom I can go off of. I'll use these bumper bolts up here and they've got a sleeve that goes through the frame so the bolt should be in the same place left and right. I'll hook the string on here and I'll get the front done and then we'll move on from there. Okay, now we got all our marks made with the plumb bob. We're gonna check height on the front and rear of the rails. Now I was saying this thing should be sitting on jack stands. And right and left side should be identical in height. We're going to come in here and we're going to measure somewhere on the frame down to the floor. And we're going to do the rear the same down to the floor. Now we don't really know what the measurement's supposed to be. It's not a true datum line. But all we want to do is check height from left to right. And one thing you're looking for, say the vehicle's been in a collision on the left front, that's where you're going to focus most of your attention. So if that is off, say quarter inch maybe in height from the right rail, that's a good indication that's the damage. The right rail is probably fine. So you're just looking for a difference between left and right. And you can do a couple different points wherever you want to. But like I said, if it's setting level on some jack stands off the suspension or the suspension unloaded, the center section is going to be nice and even. It's going to be parallel. So you just want to focus on the ends of your rail. Okay, now what we want to do is take our tape measure and start doing some diagonal measurements across all our tape marks. And that's going to tell us if we've got diamond. I could crawl underneath and do it, but that's too hard to do. I'm just going to back the truck up. You get a better view of it. And I'm going to show you how to measure this all out. Okay, here's what we got. Here's our marks on the floor and the tape. That's actually a pretty good blueprint of the frame. And all the way up to the front rails. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is measure the center section for diamond. I've got 87 and 3 eighths this way. And I've got 87 and 3 eighths this way. You could also use a tram gauge to measure across here if you want. And like I said, it probably would have been a better option to use a pen, get a little finer line. But uh, you get the idea. Okay, now I'm going to measure the front section for diamond. And I've got 75 and a quarter. and 75 and a quarter. Now I'm going to measure the, the length on these rails. They're 63 and 9 sixteenths. And 63 and 9 sixteenths. And if you've got a frame that's been hit straight on this left front rail, if you want to measure for length, you're better off going back farther in case this torque box area took an impact and drove it back. It may change your length. So we're going to go all the way back here, which would be the front of the rear spring mount. And I have 138. And here I have actually 137 and 7 eighths. 8 inch difference, but it could be my pen marks. The truck's never been wrecked. I bought it new, so as far as I'm concerned, it's straight. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to get a center line on here. What I'm going to do, all four of my marks, split the center 
I'm going to measure across and I'm going to put a mark right dead center. 39 inches should be 19 and a half. 54 and 3 quarters. 27 and 3 eighths. 19 and 9 sixteenths. Okay, I took the remainder of the string from my plumb bob. I'm going to put it on this mark and set a weight on it. And I should be able to stretch this tight and all those marks are going to line up. Okay, here's my front mark. Pull that tight. Set another weight on it. Let's go check the other two. Okay, there's the mark right there under the string. And I don't see a mark. Let's move the string. There it is right there. So we're dead center. Okay, there's our mark. This is by the rear springs. This is the front torque box area. And there's the very front mark. Okay, that's a fairly accurate way to measure most of your frame. The height is the only issue we really don't know about other than comparing side to side. But we can X this section out. We know we're good. We can X this out. We know we're good. We can measure our length from here or all the way back to here. And our center line, one of the most important things, that's fairly easy to do. So this is something you can do at home in your garage. Now the only drawback to this system, if you're going to do any pulling on the frame, if that car moves, all your marks are no good anymore. You've got to start over. But to get a, just to assess a frame and get a good measurement of what damage you're looking at, it does work pretty good. All right, on the plus side, this is probably the cheapest frame measuring system I've ever seen. I didn't have to buy anything, had everything laying around. And you could do it with the vehicle still sitting on your tape marks. It's a little harder to see and get in there to measure. I moved the truck just so, so you could see how everything works. It'll give you a good understanding of what your frame is like, if it's bent, if it's straight, where it's bent. I'm kind of impressed with it. I've never measured a vehicle like this. I've heard about it years ago and I wanted to give it a try. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, see what you think. Maybe you've heard of this, maybe you've done it before. This is the first for me. But uh, remember, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.